Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd, a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidna ilma, Rabbi zidna ilma, Rabbi zidna ilma. As always, we start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whom all praise and thanks belongs to him. And then every time we start a gathering, we send salawat, meaning peace and blessings upon who? Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So at the beginning of the gathering, we say Alhamdulillah, and we say as salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. We send peace and blessings upon Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a gathering that is beneficial for you and me. That you learn and you enjoy and then you fall in love with the book of Allah, the Qur'an. So what we'll do is for the children, inshallah, if you can grab an English translation of the Qur'an and open it up to on page 167, the clear Qur'ans. So I don't know what the, tra- like the page number is for the other one. For the clear Qur'an. The cave, the chapter of the cave, Al Kahf, and ayah number 25, verse number 25, on page number 161. It's just from 159, it's 161, the ayah 25. 161, on page number 161, the number 25. So last time we were studying uh, Surah Al Kahf and we started and we did the story of the people of the cave. And we left off at ayah number 25. Actually, we stopped at ayah number 24, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you forget something, then remember your Lord and say, inshallah, for anything that is going to happen in the future. Right? Me and you, we make, we, try, we make an intention. So Ali today was making an intention to come to the masjid. But if Allah did not will it, if Allah did not make him capable of coming to the masjid, he would not have been able to. He could have fallen sick, his car would have, could have like broken down on the way, could have, could have happened, like any number of things could have happened, right? But he made it to the masjid because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen. And when you and I, when we decide to do something in the future, what do we say? Inshallah. What's your name? Abdul Rauf, mashallah. So anytime when we do something in the future, what do we say? Insha'Allah. And Allah is saying that in ayah number 24, you guys can look at your own mushaf, so see that I'm not lying. Actually, not the mushaf, the translation. Masha'Allah. So today, insha'Allah, we'll start off where we left. And that is ayah number 25. And in ayah number 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you something. Allah is saying, وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَهْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ سِنِينَ وَزْدَادُ تِسْعَةً What is the translation? We'll pick on... What's your name, my brother? Uh, Basin. 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 Okay. Basin, read the translation for me. 25. They had remained in their cave for 300 years, adding nine. So they had remained in their cave for 300 years, adding nine. Wazdadu tisa. So the people, when the Ashab al-Kahf were found out, when they were, like the people when of that time, when the people of Kahf were found out and the people around them were like, oh, there's these young men that we've heard stories about that disappeared like hundreds of years ago. And these guys somehow like they look, don't even look a day old and they found them. Instead of learning some lessons from them, these people started to debate. They started to debate how many of them were there, whether there was five, whether there was six, whether there was seven. Were they young, old, skinny, fat, Arab, Pakistani, Somali? <laughs> All these arguments, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that not ar- do not argue about this. And don't worry about the dog that was with them. Because people were debating and arguing about what the color of the dog was. Was it a Labrador? Was it a German Shepherd? Was it a Chihuahua? What kind of dog was it? Allah is saying, do not worry about those details. Allah is saying, Worry about the lesson in the story that I'm sh- like this, this ashab, like the discovery of Ashab al Kahf, the people of the cave, 
worry about what lessons you're going to learn from them. And one of the debates that was going on at that time was whether or not resurrection is possible, meaning that once you die, are you going to be brought back to life? And if you do happen to come back to life, are you going to be just your body or are you going to be your body and soul? So who wants to answer me that? So when you're resurrected on the day of judgment, are you going to be resurrected with your body and soul? Or just body or just soul? Just soul. Just soul. Just soul. Body and soul. Body and soul. So Sa'ad said it. I don't know if somebody else said it. I was going to say it. Yeah, sorry. Inshallah, we'll ask you. Sa'ad. That's yours. Inshallah. So anytime you guys get an answer right, you get this. But you got to raise your hands, inshallah. All right? So, but then people did not focus on that side of the like lesson and trying to learn something from this story. What did they do? They started arguing and talking. It's like if I liked basketball and I would spend all my day talking about who's better, Michael Jordan or LeBron or Kobe. And I would talk about this all day. But this is not a productive conversation. It is a waste. Right? It has no benefit to me or you. Who cares if LeBron's better or who cares if Jordan is better? Right? So Allah is saying, learn something from their story. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right after is saying, They had remained in their cave for 300 years, adding nine. Because another debate they were having is how long did these people stay in that cave? And it is something that crosses our mind as well, right? We're like, okay, how many of them were there and then how long did they stay there? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like just last time we had our class, told us, do not worry about things that do not matter. What, what benefit is it to you if there were seven? Does anything change for you in your practical life? Does it ma change anything? No. The thing that is important is that you learn something from it, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 26, Say, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah knows best of, about how long they stayed there. So Allah is reminding us again, because Allah knows that human beings, me and you, we're forgetful beings. That we're going to make mistakes and we're going to... So Allah is saying, I just told you, do not worry about their number. But now you're arguing again about their, like the time that they stayed in, the, in that cave. So Allah is saying, Allah knows best how long they stayed. It could be 300 years. Some say it is 300 Gregorian years, meaning like the solar calendar that we follow, January, February, March. And some say it's 300 plus and nine years in Hijri calendar, in the Muslim calendar. What month are we in of the Hijri calendar? <laughs> oh, SubhanAllah. Which one do you want? Bro. There we go. Inshallah. You got to be on your toes. You got to be quick. I want the, all of this candy to be gone. And I want you guys to have it. But oh, you got you to gotta help me. You got to... finish the coffee first. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad. MashaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَوْرِ With him alone is the knowledge of the unseen of the heavens and the earth. This is ayah number 26. أَبْصِرُ بِهِ وَأَسْمِيرُ How perfectly hears and sees that nothing misses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you say a word, Allah knows it and Allah heard it. If something came across your mind, Allah knows and Allah knows exactly what came across your mind. So Muhammad, you thought, oh, I want coffee crisp in your heart. And Allah heard it. And lo and behold, you got the coffee crisp. <laughs> right? So, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. Allah says, مَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَلِيِّمْ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا They have no guardians beside him and he shares his command with nobody. And this is where the story of the Ashab al-Kahf kind of ends. And before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the next story, in Surah al-Kahf, this chapter of the cave that we're studying, has four amazing stories in it. But before we get into the next one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a little mini sermon, mini khutbah before we get into the next story. And Allah wants us to get ready for the next story. So you know how when your dad shares a story with you and there's a lesson that is in it, he may have given you some introduction to it, some background knowledge.
to get you ready to think to make you think in a certain type of way which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do that here who wants to read the translation of ayah number 27 for me mashallah what's your name Saf. Saf. Safi mashallah read it Safi Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Recite what has been revealed to you from the book of your Lord. Surah Al-Kahf is really important because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it provides you protection, right? Yeah, mashallah. So how does it do that? You already answered, so we're going to give Ra'uf uh, a chance. Abdul Ra'uf. If it gets around, I don't know them like in order, but I know Sarah was Jinnah. So, Ashabu Jinnah stands for like how proud he was from himself. And after. How does Surah Al Kahf give you the protection from the Jal and all of these things? Like, if you read it every Friday? Yeah, so that's. If you read yeah. it every Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect you from friend. Yes. You know, uh, isn't it also if you know the first 10 A's memorized? Yes. Okay. And what's your answer? So the first story of Ashab al-Kah is uh, like the way that Masih al-Dajjal uh, finds a way, it represents the weakness of Masih al-Dajjal. Uh, no, I no, no, the weakness. How about you hold on to that thought? Think about it, and inshallah, next time I ask, by then you'll have this picture in your head and tell me the answer, inshallah. Ali, what do you want? Uh, the well, I forgot your name. Uh, yeah. Yahya? Yahya? Ali? MashaAllah. Bro, I want you guys to have candy too. Yalla! <laughs> so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, recite what has been revealed to you from the book of your Lord. And this is important. Because if we stop reciting the Qur'an, and if we start and un stop understanding the Qur'an, then how are we going to have protection from all of these different things that we have around us? So Allah is giving you a reminder. Allah is recite what has been revealed to you from the book of your Lord. And Allah is saying, min kitabi rabbik, from your Lord. Obviously it's addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but how cool is it? That Allah is talking to you and me. Allah is saying, your Lord. Muhammad, your Lord. Abdul Rauf, your Lord. Yahya, your Lord. Your Master. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you, me, and everybody here. And is saying, وَاسْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدَا None can change his words, nor can you find any refuge besides him. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not protect us, nobody can protect us. And why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say all of a sudden, nobody, none can change his words. لا مبدل لكلماتي Nothing can change his words. This is not like an, a question, sorry. I was going to lead into something. So, hold on to that inshallah. Um, that this has relevance in the landscape and the time that we are living in, right? That every single day, there is something new that comes out in terms of the ideology, in terms of morals, in terms of ethics, in terms of what is right or wrong, right? When you look around you, there's a new gender that they create and talk about in schools and everything every single day. Like every other day, they'll be like, okay, now if you want to feel like a girl, be a girl. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you a boy, could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you make a mistake? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. So if He has made you a boy, you're a boy. But the world around us, they say you can today be a girl if you want, tomorrow you can be a rabbit if you want. So it changes day by day. So what was right 10 years ago is not right today. All these LGBTQ issues, the feminism, I guess you guys are too young for this. But these things change. And the way the wind blows, they face that way. And they become part of that. If the wind blows this way, today they'll change their morals and values. But what is important is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never has changed. Meaning, what was right 1400 years ago when the Quran was revealed, 
to Rasulullah is still right. And what was wrong then is still wrong. The word of Allah is perfect. Meaning the Quran and the Sunnah is perfect. It doesn't change. So if somebody tells you that Islam is an archaic religion, you tell them, no, it's not. It's a perfect religion preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the morals and ethics are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't change them willy-nilly left, right and center. That all of the things that we consider to be permissible are from Allah, not from me and you, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, and this is very, very important. Allah says, وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ MashaAllah Muhammad. So Allah says, patiently stick with those who call upon your, their Lord morning and evening. What is important about having good friends? Say your name again. I saw his hand go up first. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was try- <laughs> What's your name? Safi. Safi, yes. Safi. What is why is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala telling us to hang out with people that are calling upon Allah day and night? Why is it important after Safi? Well, no, I would say that. So yeah. you have someone so you have someone to like follow that you know is right, you can trust him. And so like like you can have someone that like has your back. Like Mashallah. So this is really good. So if I have a good friend, he will give me what? Advice. Good advice. Safi, which one do you want, bro? MashaAllah. So, so if today Ali and I decided that we were going to go rob a bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allahu Akbar. That's not the response I wanted. <laughs> so, but... <laughs> Make sure What's up, Basil? <laughs> so if me and Ali today decided to go rob a bank, but we know I'm friends with Abdul Rauf, I'm re- friends with Muhammad, and all of you guys here, and all of my sisters here, I'm friends with good people that are sitting in the masjid. What will you tell me, Basil? Stuff from Mama robbing a bank. Exactly. So if I'm surrounded by good friends that fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they will remind me of good. And the story that we're about to get into is Ashabul Jannatain, the two friends of the Jannatain, meaning the gardens. The next story, it's two friends. It's two, it's two. Yeah. So, so then, first there were good friends, like to, they're together to build this dam. Yeah. But then, Muhammad. The, the arrogant one came yeah. and, and said, I no, no, no. Know. This is not a question. Or I don't want you anymore. I'm going to listen to my wife. Exactly. No, no, no. Inshallah. I know you know. But let me continue, inshallah. Right? I know you know Muhammad. MashaAllah. Allahumma barik. So Allah is saying, stick with those that are calling upon their Lord day and night, seeking His pleasure. Because that's the best company, right? And if, let's say, you guys weren't God-fearing people, and Ali and I came with that plan with you, you'd be like, yeah, let's go. Two million dollars. Right? But you guys are good people, mashaAllah. <laughs> Bro, two million is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so next we get into, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you something else here. Allah says, وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Do not look, let your eyes look beyond them, desiring the luxuries of this worldly life. So Allah is giving you another example and Allah is getting ready for get, getting you ready and getting me ready for the story that is about to come. That A, having good friends is very important, right? Having good company is very important. Secondly, do not fall prey to the luxuries of this world. The nice cars, the nice hotel rooms and the vacations and this or that. They're temporary things that you may enjoy in the like, moment, but don't let that be your like, main purpose in life. So from that, what is the main purpose of life of a Muslim, my sister? Say that again. To respect Allah. That is very good. So the purpose of life... Uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> Which chocolate would you like, my sister? Which one over here would you like? Sorry? Arrow? MashaAllah. Give it 
to her, please. Okay. Ali, you said it right as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us for the for any other reason other than worshipping Him. And how do you worship Allah? Is by first of all getting to know Him. Who is Allah? And why did Allah create all of us? And why are we here? What is the purpose of this life? All of those answers are where? In the Quran. In the Quran. You don't get no candy for that. I said it first. I know. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you some important lessons. Livestock after on candy after Yeah, subhanallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala man wa wa kana amruhu furuta. And Allah says, Do not obey those heart like people whose hearts Allah has made heedless of their of his remembrance. So Allah is saying, Do not follow the people. That their hearts are following their desires instead of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're following their desires and they do everything that they want to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطَ That their state is a state of total loss. How easy is it for you to not wake up for Fajr and just sleep? Very easy. No. <laughs> not too used to it. Like, MashaAllah, I want to be like you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that following your desires is very easy. But for you to come to the masjid, for you to learn about who you are, what is your identity as a Muslim, what is Allah making permissible for you, what is Allah not making permissible for you, and then leave your, live your life accordingly, it becomes a little bit of, of a tough thing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whosoever follows his desires is a total loser. I don't want to be a loser. Do you want to be a loser? Do you want to be a loser? I don't want to no. this. Yeah, I don't want to take an L either. <laughs> so, so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And say, O Prophet, this is the truth from your Lord. That the Qur'an is what? The truth. الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ The truth from your Lord. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wills, let them believe. And whoever wants to choose, let, then let them disbelieve. And subhanAllah, we've been talking about this iman and believing in Allah and obeying Allah. But what is at the end of all of this? Why is Allah asking us to obey Him? Why is Allah asking us to not follow our desires? What is at the end of the road? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pr- like promising us? I know. Oh, no. I, I read the first. Jannah. Jannah. Me. Jannah. I read the first. You have to be fair. He raised it the first, though. No, like I, my I, brother I, in the green sweater. What is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala prom- promising us Jannah. if we choose to believe? Jannah. And what if we choose to disbelieve? I did. I, did. I, did. I, did. I, did. I don't know. I There's two ways. <laughs> this I is a dangerous Jahannam. game. Jahannam. Masha Allah. Why read my hand first? Yeah. You know what we'll do, Shuraib Bhai? If you can take this and give everyone one each, because they all raise their hands. I can. Oh, you can? So, inshallah, Rauf can do this, inshallah. Abdul Rauf. So, g- that is our brother Shuraib. So, I want everyone to be paying attention, though. No candy if you're not paying attention, bro. Alright. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Yahya, be quiet please. Alright. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to go into a description so that you do not lose focus. Allah wants you to know what is waiting for us at the end of the road. And first of all, Allah is going to scare us a little bit. This candy thing is too distracting. <laughs> yeah, actually. Abdul Rauf. So give them one, don't give them a choice, just give them one, whatever you pick. And then come back to your seat really quick. Give it to their, in their hands nicely. MashaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a description. Who wants to read ayah number 29 for me? From, surely we have prepared for the wrongdoers. What's your name? Tamim. Tamim. So read ayah number 29 from, surely we have prepared. Surely we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire whose walls will complete. 
Come. MashaAllah. Stop right there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna a'tadna lil zalimina narun ahata bihim. MashaAllah. Allahumma barik ali. I, I know you guys know, bro, but you gotta let me speak a little bit. <laughs> so surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and this is to pay attention to this. Allah is saying for the wrongdoers, Allah has created a fire. And it's not just a random fire, it's a fire from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, this fire completely surrounds them. May Allah protect us from the naf. I don't want to go in a place where all around me is a wall of a fire. And within it, I am. I don't want that. Allahumma ajirna min al May Allah protect us all from the punishment of the fire. And subhanAllah, when, what would you do if you were in a position where you were surrounded in a place that had no escape and you were in a fire? Wouldn't you be like, yeah, oh, somebody help me, ya yeah, Allah help me? You would. So these people will say the same thing. These people that are being punished will say the same thing. And when they cry, cry out for their, like, for help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will be aided with water like molten metal. So when it's extremely hot, don't you want some water? Because you're like thirsty, you're sweating, and it's so hot outside. You want water. And these people, may Allah protect us. May Allah forgive us. When they call for help, they're going to be given water which is like molten lava. Is that going to... Is that going to do anything for your thirst? No. It's going to make matters worse. Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here as well. That their faces will be burnt. When they drink this water, their faces will be burnt. Allahumma ajibna minan So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he would come across the ayat, which are mentioning the adab of Jahannam or some sort of a hardship from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would seek Allah's refuge. So he would make dua, he'd be like, Allahumma ajibna min an or something like that. So you guys make dua for that as well. Like, so Allah protects us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِئْسَ الشَّرَابُ وَسَاءَتْ مُرْتَفَقَ What a horrible drink and what a horrible place to rest. That the drink itself is very bad. And Jahannam is a very bad place to rest. May Allah protect us. But there's a rule in the Quran, almost, that wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Jahannam, Allah will mention Jannah as well. So that we don't lose hope, we don't get too scared. And we have something to look forward to, to something to be happy about. So, who wants to read ayah number 30? My sister raised her hand as well, so we will give her a chance. MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. So she said, As for those who believe and do good, inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. That the first thing you do is believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then wa amilu salihat. And we try our best to do all good deeds. What is your favorite good deed to do? Quick. Salah. And sadaqah. Beautiful. What about you, Safi? Um, so you said Allah, Allahumma barik. What about you, Muhammad? You make me die more sleep because when I when I sleep, I sleep, you guys still get asanat. MashaAllah. What about you? Uh, having good manners. Say that again. Having good manners. MashaAllah, that is really important. Having good manners. So these are amazing things, right? So inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. So whoever does good while believing in Allah and hoping for a reward from Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you and me. So whoever prayed today, whoever did sadaqah today, whoever had good manners and said salam to everyone when they came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we will certainly never deny the reward of those who are best in deeds. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forget the sadaqah that you gave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forget the good manners that you had. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the best of rewards. And subhanAllah, I'm getting excited. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us exactly what we'll have in Jannatul Firdaus. Inshallah, because we're all going to go to Jannatul Firdaus. Ask Allah for Jannatul Firdaus. Nothing short. Why not? Allah's mercy is amazing. You, we make dua and we try our best and we will certainly go. 
That is a guarantee from Allah, insha'Allah, right? And then, obviously, some people, you know, if they don't believe and they fall short, we ask Allah to forgive them as well, give them hidayah. But we we hope for the best from Allah, right? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ulaika lahum jannatu adni tajri min tahtihim al anhar." And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling you exactly where you're gonna get. Allah is saying, it is they who will have the gardens of eternity with rivers flowing under their feet. And you have to know, a Jannah is a garden that is fully green. Lush green, nothing else. Like imagine you go to a garden or a mountain or something and it is green and you cannot find anything else in it. Totally green, beautiful to look at. I thought um, Jannah's color was as orange and green. It's green and gold. Green and gold. There's colors that I don't even know there. But a jannah, in, in, linguistically I'm talking. Like what is a jannah in Arabi language when you talk about a jannah? Because there's other words for a garden as well. Why do not? Why does Allah Bustan. not use them? Bustan is one of them, right? Is it better to say jannah for those or jannah for those al Janatul Firdaus covers it, but Janatul Firdaus Ila Ala is even better. So, but if you're in Janatul Firdaus, I think life is great at that point. But is that actually true if you sleep and you make wudu? Even if you die in your sleep, you'll go to Janatul Firdaus? I'm not fully aware of that one. Maybe it is true, but maybe I haven't come across it. So I'll have to get back to you. But, oh, God. So, ayah number 31. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ It is they who will have the gardens of eternity with rivers flowing under their feet. And subhanallah, so you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising you jannat, meaning gardens, acreages, and mountains and mountains of your own land. It'll be yours, Yahya, inshaAllah. And I'll have my own like huge property and acreage or whatever. But Allah is saying that they will have rivers flowing under their feet. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there they will be adorned with bracelets of gold. So gold is very haram, right? For men. For men it's haram, right? Are the silk and silver? Silver is allowed. But gold is haram. What is the what is the symbol of money in this day and age? When you look at musicians or rap stars or like movie stars, They'll be wearing watches that are gold. They'll be wearing chains that are gold. And, and they'll be doing all of this, right? As a symbol of their wealth. As a symbol of their status. That they're rich. They've made it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in Jannah, when you've actually made it, you will be having bracelets of gold. And it's not like you are going to go put this bracelet of gold on yourself. Your servants will be putting them on for you. Bro, you'll have whatever you want. You'll have anything you want. Yeah. So, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they will wear green garments of fine silk and rich brocade. So imagine the freshest fit that you can imagine. You, you'll have, like better than Jordans, better than Air Force Ones, better than anything that you can imagine, better than Gucci, Prada, whatever. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that you'll have the best of the clothes, and you will have bracelets of gold. You'll have your own jannat. And where will you be sitting? You'll be reclining on canopied couches. You'll be sitting on your throne, muttaqiina fiha al araik, a custom fit throne for you. Subhanallah. And then where you make a wish and it happens, yeah, like Allahu Akbar. <laughs> yeah, just like the... Who wants Jannah? I want Jannah. MashaAllah, we all want Jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka Jannah al Fidawsi A'la. InshaAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... We'll ask the questions at the very end. Ni'ma thawabu wa hasunat murtafaqa. What a marvelous, marvelous reward. And what a fabulous place to rest. So Allah is promising us all of this. All we have to do, believe in Allah and do good to the best of our ability. We are all humans, we will make mistakes, right? We make mistakes, we forget sometimes, we sin, 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to seek repentance, to come back to me and ask for forgiveness and Allah will forgive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us this beautiful garden in Jannatul I say Jannatul Firdaus as if like my place is already booked, but I hope so, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. And this is very important because right after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to transition into the story, the next story. Because in Surah Al-Kahf, we know there's like four stories. So first one we've already done. And this is the preamble, meaning the intro or before that, like a little khutbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start, to get you start thinking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here tells you about real wealth. The wealth that will stay forever and ever. Because once you're in Jannah, there's no leaving. And right after that, you will come across a, a story of two friends. One of whom is very rich. And Allah has blessed him with everything that you can imagine of this world. Best of this world. The wealth, the health, the people, everything. And the friend. Yeah, subhanAllah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a poet now. <laughs> but, and then the other friend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him much wealth. In terms of the dunya. He didn't have much money. He didn't have gardens and this or that. So subhanAllah, we're going to learn about that. And this is very important for us. Because we're going to learn about the love that a person has for his dun like wealth in this dunya. And then how that person goes astray, blinded by the luxury and the shininess of this dunya, of whatever he has in this dunya, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over here, gonna start the next story. لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ Of two, two men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَضْرِبْ And in Arabic, ضَرَبَ means to hit or to strike. And it's to hit something hard enough that it makes a sound, a loud bang. If there was a loud bang right over there, like that, and you would be like, oh, what happened? Your attention will go there, right? Your focus will go towards that sound. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me and you and everybody else that is listening to this, to pay attention to what is about to come. وَضْرِبْ and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to oh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give them an example, for, to strike it, an example for them of rajulain, of two men. جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ And Allah says to one of them, Allah gave two gardens, jannatain. And we already said jannah is different than the different other words for the garden. It's a garden that is fully green, meaning there is no land being wasted here. So if this was some agriculture land that me or you owned, this was the prime spot. No land is being waste, it's green to the brim and no like other thing in there. So full crops all over. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what was in this garden that he had? He had two gardens, min a'nab, of grapevine. So he had grapes in, this gar in these two gardens. We don't know. Jannatain, <laughs> two gardens. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah gave two gardens of great wines to one of them. <laughs> so this garden, so you if you have ever seen the grape vines, have you ever seen a plant with the grapes on it? It's a vine, right? Meaning it's like it's very fragile, it's weak. So if a strong wind comes, then it will fall, it will collapse. So what did Allah do? Allah made, as a protection for that, Allah says, وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلِ Then we surrounded this, these two gardens. Imagine two gardens, beautiful, amazing gardens. Like, he's the billionaire of his time. He's the Elon Musk of his time. And around this, he's sur it is surrounded by date palms, meaning the date tree. So the date tree is tall, strong, sturdy, and it blocks the wind. So anytime a wind comes, the grape plants within the gardens, it's safe. That's the Jannah, inshallah, that we'll get afterwards, the paradise, right? In Arabic language, a Jannah is also a garden. Like if you had a garden, that let's say you're a farmer and you had a garden, you could call it a Jannah. So, Linguistically, Jannah just means a garden. But that Jannah, we know, is 
it's something promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other jannah means like very good pledge. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah has protected the date palms. Uh, Allah has protected the great ones with the date palms around it. And if that wasn't enough, Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعَا That Allah placed various crops in between. So there's two gardens, side by side. <coughs> around them, this let's say is one garden, is date palms. Date palms. Within grapevine. Between them, Allah has p- placed some land for crops. So this land, imagine he's growing everything. <coughs> he is growing everything in it. Allah has given him the best land. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kilta al jannataini atat ukulaha wa lam tadlim minhu shay'a. That each garden yielded all of its produce, wa lam tadlim minhu shay'a, and never falling short. Meaning, this, I don't know if you, like, you guys probably don't know much, but you guys know something about farming and agriculture. Can you have a 100% yield for every crop? No. Some things, like, if you had an apple tree, you may or may not get some. Apples, some of them may go fall down on the ground, ground and they may rot or something, and so not all of them will become ripe. But this guy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is saying that everything that he had in this garden was yielding 100%. Nothing was going to waste. Each plant was giving fruit, each plant was yielding its crop, and nothing was going to waste. Ever. Like nothing was going to waste, meaning like even it didn't even fall and like rot on the ground. Everything stayed on the trees, maybe, and then Allahu Alam, they went and picked it up. But nothing was going to waste, meaning he wasn't losing any money, nothing like that. Hundred percent yield from every cro- like tree and like plant that he had there. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then you'll be thinking, okay, where is this these gardens getting the water? Because you need to water the plants. So Allah took care of that problem as well. وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا Nahara, that Allah caused a river to flow between them. What else can you ask for? I'm not sure. You've got the best crop, the grapevine. It's a pretty good crop. And then it's protected as well by the date palms. And then you have land for other crops. And then for water, Allah has caused a river to flow between them. Lamborghini? Bro, like this guy is bawling. This guy is rich, rich. And when I tell you all of this... He's off the charts. When I tell you all of this, right? Don't you think, like, the first thought that comes to my mind, and you can tell me what comes to your mind, I'm like, SubhanAllah, Allah has blessed this guy. Right? You're like, I don't know if you guys are thinking that, but I'm like, SubhanAllah, this guy, Allah has blessed him. None of you are thinking, oh, he's done all of this because of his own capabilities. Right? You're thinking Allah has blessed him. So which is the right way to think about it? Because, hey, you have to blessing him. Not like that. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ And he had other resources as well. So one day, he said to his friend, Sahibihi, his friend. And we know what a sahib is. We discussed it slightly in the last class that we had. And if you forgot, that's okay. What is a sahib or a sahabi? But it's more than a friend. A Khalil is a friend as well. So, somebody said companion. So a companion. A companion means that a sahib will stay with you. Why is a sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu called a sahabi? Because they used to stay with him all the time. They would wake up with him, go to bed together, go to war together, study together, go to the masjid together. A sahib is a person that you hang out with. It's a friend. And it's a special friend, meaning it's like your best friend almost. So one day, he's talking to his friend. So he didn't just randomly just go up to him and be like, Hey, he didn't just randomly show up to his neighbor's house, knocked on the door and said, I'm greater than you in wealth and I'm superior in manpower. It's like you going to your neighbor's house and be like, I'm richer than you. Yeah. <laughs> So he didn't do that. He, it means over here, وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ While he was talking to him, he was having a conversation. It's like me and Shu'aib were having a conversation. I'm like, Shu'aib, how is life? And he's like, I'm good, wallahi. And I'm like, bro, what happened? And he's like, yeah, alhamdulillah. And he's like, how are things with you? And all of a sudden, 
in all of this, I'm like, my Mercedes broke down. But don't worry, I have a Lamborghini in my garage. Oh, by the way, how's your bicycle? I didn't have to say all of this, but I told you, I, okay, I have a Lamborghini, I have all of these things, and you have a bicycle, That's meaning? Do. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah, Shuaib has a nicer car than me. <laughs> in reality. <laughs> but, so this guy is talking to his friend. Imagine you, you're talking to your friend Saad. Let's say you're talking to your friend in school. No, Saad bin, Abi, uh, Saad bin Shuaib. <laughs> So Saad, let's say you're talking to your friend after summer vacation and you go to school and your friend, you guys are talking, you're like, oh, how was, how was your summer vacation? And your friend goes all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere. He's like, yeah, we went for Umrah. And you're like, mashallah, that's nice. And he's like, and then we went to India. And he's like, oh, subhanAllah, that's very nice. And he's like, on the way back from India, we stopped in Turkey for two days. And then we stopped in Dubai. Oh, by the way, how was your vacation? Did you go anywhere? And Saad's like, oh, I went to Sylvan Lake, bro. <laughs> Subhanallah, what kind of a friend is this? That is showing off his wealth in the face of his friend. And our, I don't know about you, when I was growing up, this was something that the kids would do at school. They would lie and make up things. Oh, my dad did this, 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 this. So this guy in the middle of a conversation with his friend says, أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَثَرًا that I'm greater than you in wealth and superior in manpower. And if I said this, if I said, let's say me and you are friends, if I said this to you, would you be hurt? You wouldn't be happy. You'd be like, bro, what's the point of this? We were just having a conversation. In the middle of that conversation, you'd say this to me? <laughs> and you're my friend. <laughs> Allah. Allah. Just like right now, they were talking about like So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you about this man. That has the wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 35. What is the translation of ayah number 35? Who hasn't answered yet? Muhammad, we have to give everyone a chance. We'll give Yahya a chance, then you'll read the next one. Inshallah, after that. Try to have a chance. And he entered his property while wronging his soul, saying, I do not think this will ever perish. Subhanallah. So, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِي So he entered his jannah, his property, his land, his gardens, وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِي While being an oppressor, ظَالِم is a person who is oppressing, who is doing something wrong, لِنَفْسِي On his own self. What did he say? I do not think this will ever perish. Meaning that it will never go away. He says, he's like entering his property. Let's say he's entering his huge mansion. And while he's entering, he's like, I don't think this will ever go away. How do you know that? You could die the next day. You could, right? But he's saying, I do not think this will ever perish. Meaning he's, he's lost focus at this point. He's not thinking about akhirah. What is a believer always thinking about? He's thinking about his akhirah all the time. Right? But this person, because of his wealth, his money, his mansion, he's like, oh, this is so much fun. I don't think this will ever perish. This is him being hopeful. That if this ever goes away, then that will be pretty sad. So this guy is in denial as well. He's saying, I do not think this will ever go away. And then, subhanallah, what else did he say? Muhammad, read ayah number 36, the translation. Nor will I think the hour will ever come, and in fact, the hour we should stop it. Five minutes? So he said two things. First, when he's entering his paradise, his mansion, his whatever, he's saying, I don't think this will ever go away. What do you say when you drink coffee or tea or something? Or something really good happens to you? Good. Yeah, but what else do you say? Alhamdulillah. I feel like, oh, nice. 
Don't you say Alhamdulillah or something yeah, like that? Yeah, exactly. Did this guy say Alhamdulillah? No. What is he saying? He's saying, oh yeah, he's like, bro, I don't think this will ever go away. He's saying that instead of Alhamdulillah. So imagine he's sitting, he's about to sit in the middle uh, in his Lamborghini, and he instead of saying Alhamdulillah, he's saying, oh, I don't think this will ever go away. And he's already said, Ana aktaru minka. So I am, I have more wealth. I'm like, I'm the guy. So then he says, وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً Nor uh, do I think that Yeah أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ here إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ is somewhere else So وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ So he's saying that in the middle of all of this All this money has gotten to his head And he's saying, I don't think That the Qiyamah that everyone talks about Will ever even happen He's enjoying his life too much and he's like the like the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises Yawmul Akhirah that that day will never come. The sa'a, the hour will never come. And then he says something else. He's like Wala irruditu ila Rabbi la ajidanna khayran minha munqalaba. That if I am ever to return to my Lord, I will definitely get something better in return. Yahya. What did I say? You can talk afterwards, inshallah. We'll be ending in five minutes. Oh, 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 oh wait, I thought you said you were going to do a trivia. Inshallah, afterwards. Afterwards? After, like, we end this. Well, I don't have kahoot, next time we'll make a kahoot. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً That this guy is saying first, that I don't think whatever I have will ever go away. And if, by chance, we were to die and come back alive and all of these things, like, the Yawm al that your dad and my parents and like your parents keep telling you about He's like, oh, I don't think it'll ever happen And if, and then he says like, and if I'm ever to go back to my Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Meaning that I'll die and be held accountable for all of the things that I do He thinks he's pretty good, he's like, if Allah has given me all this in this dunya That means he must love me, that I'm special And so he's like, in, in the Akhirah Allah will give me even more a better outcome than all of this which is not the right way to think about things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya gives somebody more wealth and somebody not so much wealth and this dunya is temporary and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he tests us in khayr and shaf meaning in the good and the bad so anything you guys are good bro MashaAllah yeah. So we'll stop at ayah number three. Just know that there's two of them. One of them is loaded. Allah has given him all kinds of wealth. But then he's kind of arrogant about it and he showed off to his friend, right? It was his friend or his brother. Sahibi, meaning his companion, his friend. So, inshallah, question time. Come on, chocolate time. Chocolate time. Yeah, chocolate. Question time. It's true because... MashaAllah. So, when we started the lesson... So when we... So everyone's paying attention? Yes. Yes. So the, the trivia part, the questions part. And you can look in your books as well if you want. So we started from... Uh, we started from ayah number 25. So the question is, what is the number of years that Allah mentions that they stayed in the I, I don't, in I know, the cave? I know. I know. <laughs> Who raised their hand first? Three hundred. Three hundred years. Three hundred years of ordinary. 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 Three hund